Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plane. Um, today we're gonna to be reacting to this video by Andre Norman. Check this video out. So many people end up in solitary and they don't have this moment. I had my moment. And when I went out and I told my friends, or you call gang members, yo, I figured it out. I'm gonna go home and go to Harvard. They wanted to laugh at me, right? But I had a habit of people. Okay. So only you get away with laughing. <laughs> then they try to talk me out of it. Oh, Dre, you can't go. You're black, you're a gang member. You're in the hole trying to kill people. You're a psychopath. They told me all the reasons I couldn't go. And what they were really saying is don't leave us. What they were really saying is misery loves company. Hey, let's go beat up somebody. They're down. Hey, let's go stab somebody. They're down. Hey, let's go do this. They're down. Anything negative that would ruin our lives, they were all in favor of us. If I wanted to start a riot, they ride with me in a minute. If I want to go beat somebody up, they ride with me in a minute. I want to go kill somebody, they're down. The moment I said I want to go fix my life, they're like, oh. You can't do that. They believe in a system of casting, but this is where they belong. And I didn't believe that. All right, Kirby. I like this video. Um, so, but I, I want to hear your part on it. I really do. Probably more because I know your background and stuff. So I'd like to know um, how you interpreted this video from what you've been through. Right. Uh, it's a lot of videos on YouTube that, you know, take me back to being back in the city. Um, like I talk about it all the time, I was born and raised in Detroit. Um, not in, not in the projects hood, but I was in the hood hood. Everybody from Eileen, Seven Mile, y'all know where we at. Um, but what he stated was true, and the part that I'm saying, the, the part that he stated was true was when he said misery loves company. I preach that all the time, and you know. You hear it through different sayings, crab in a barrel mentality and things like that. But when he said that what the inmates were saying, when he said he wanted to go to college was they was really saying subliminally is, hey, don't leave us. Don't leave me. And you see that with family and friends all the time. I mean, another part that he said, if, you know, I reached out to people and we wanted to do like go to the club or go hang out or do something nefarious, you know, to get in trouble. They was all for it. But soon as, you know, and I never, never forget uh, 2008, the financial crisis, you know, everybody's in crisis mode. Um, I'm in Iraq. And then, like I told you on a previous video, the what I thought on what I was going to do to try to change my life from just, you know, living a paycheck to paycheck grind. And then I thought I'll invest in the stock market. And and I well I would learn it then invest in it and I told everybody all the soldiers around me about it you know they'd be like oh yeah man that's a good idea or whatever some people talk talk bad about it um, I called you know family friends everybody anybody who had an ear to listen I was saying you know and the only thing I really knew I didn't know a lot of big nuggets about it but I would repeat um, you know the Carnegie and War uh, Warren Buffett's uh, verbiage of his blood when his blood in the streets that's the time to buy and 2008 2009 when I was in Iraq and it just happened to be March of 2009 when I thought of it close to the bottom of the market anyway um it was blood in the streets everybody was crying bloody murder back in the states because again I was in Iraq and I'm calling everybody telling them you know hey you know this is the time I'm about to start doing it and then I just started immersing myself in it and then you pass four, and then you know I had all the you know the negators and people saying no, don't do it, man. Stock market risky, don't do that. And then you fast forward 10, 10 years later, and then I started to grow in that uh, aspect, especially investing in the stock market. And then you hear one or two people you know call you, oh man, I wish I would have listened then. And I always say you can start now, but of course people want that jump shot from all right, I'm still at nothing. We was both had nothing together. Now you at this position, but now I want you to tell me what what can you tell me to get me from where I'm at right now to where you're at today. But they want that tomorrow. They want that flip tomorrow, and that is that's something that when I heard this video, I was just like, this is how it was. I mean, even still to this day, I have people, soldiers, and uh, family members who will call me and be like, man, I wish I would just started when you started. I mean, I hear it all day at first I used to get frustrated and then you know trying to coach them and try to convince them that they could start now and get there 
now I just I don't even pay it no mind. But what he's saying is true. They they didn't talk bad about me because I mean not bad about me. They didn't you know try to get me not to do this because they they wanted me to fail or they wanted me to uh, they wanted me to not do better. But they just figured, hey, the you know they brainwashed by the narrative, the narrative that's in the media, the narrative that's in movies. Oh, you black, you don't supposed to do that. You're black, you don't. You can't have money. You can't do this. Only way you can have money if you're black, if you're an actor or you play sports or if you hit the lottery or something like that. That's that's the only narrative. You, you know, they say, oh, your focus should be, you know, getting back from Iraq, getting home and trying to get you a, trying to get a job at a plant, get some benefits, get some insurance, get, you know, that that narrative. That's but that's the narrative that they all, you know, they preach, preach American dream, yada, yada, yada. And then people say, oh, that's all you should do. That's all you should. You shouldn't. You shouldn't try to do no more. If you try to do more outside of, you know, sports or being an actor, the only way you can make money is selling drugs or, you know, but they never look past that level. And that's why this, this video really resonates with me. But that's that's what's going on. And people put their fears, they put their own fears on other people. And that's why I always try to tell people is. When you get an advice, understand your advice is coming. Your advice is coming from their perspective. It's not coming from a new perspective. And their perspective could be, you know, watered down or ran about because, you know, you don't know what influenced them to make them come to the decision. But I'll digress and leave it right there. Yeah, I um, growing up dealt with the same thing. Um, you know, hearing from my I've thinned my circle completely. I mean from a lot of friends I had growing up to now it's just like less than a handful and that's because of the same mentality um people will try to hold you back in any shape and form I heard you know hey now that you're starting to save some money why don't you actually take that and go to college with no plan in sight I had no plan what am I going to do in college I have no idea so me using that money to go to college would have just been a setback. I have no idea what I want to go to college for. Why would I waste my money that I've earned on this rather than continue to pursue the path that I wanted to take, which was investing? And not just that, but not going to clubs or not going to parties, stuff like that. You know, I heard from friends like, oh man, you work too much. You got to at least, you know, settle down and have some fun. Your money. Stuff. Yeah, enjoy your money. You know, like, I, I mean, I heard it a lot like, oh, when do you ever stop working? Like, when do you guys ever start working? I mean, you know, they, right. Right. so, you know, people will always try and hold you back and it could be friends or family. Um, I heard it from both from, you know, every, every kind of shape and form of the crab and barrel mentality. And now that I have, uh, I wouldn't say made it because there's still so much I want to accomplish, but now that I've accelerated my growth and I'm, ahead of most that I knew growing up with um now I start to hear like oh man you're just you're just greedy money isn't everything Alex you got to stop thinking you think you're better than everybody yeah you think you're better than everybody and like so these are people that you know uh you know I would hear these comments from people growing up in school where they were the popular kids they were you know I'm a short guy they were taller you know so me you know maybe I'm not as cool because i'm not tall enough or whatever just stupid stuff that doesn't matter in life uh the athlete yeah this big guy. <laughs> <laughs> the uh you know the athletic crowd stuff like that you know i'd hear you know some of my friends were like athletic and stuff like that so it's like you know that was cool growing up but now that you've gotten out of high school you know are you doing anything athletically or are you are you per pursuing a career to be an athlete no so Okay, that lasted when we were kids, but what are you doing now that actually matters? And so now it's like, you know, they, you know, it was that whole like peer pressure of like, oh, you got to do this, but really, what is that actually going to do for you in in your adulthood? So now that I've started to actually achieve certain goals and stuff, now it's like, oh, now you're the bad person because you've, you know, ran too far ahead from us. And you know, I'm not one to try and tear them down, but it's one I'm definitely one to not give them excuses either. And I tell them that 
And I've told them, you know, there's, there are no excuses. If you want something in life, you gotta, you have to go after it with everything you've got. And when I tell them that, you know, then I get the, oh, it's not that easy. And every excuse in the book, I mean, from people, from, you know, kids I know saying, oh, it's so hard to buy a house. It's so hard to get a good job. It's so hard to do like, you have to think outside the box and you got to use your brain to actually figure out what you want in life and study that study every angle and how you can accomplish what you want. Just find what you want. And then the actual act of taking those steps to achieve what you want will come in the process of you actually knowing what you want to begin with. And it could be any goal, but people definitely like to hold you back. That is definitely for certain. Yeah. And I don't, I don't necessarily put it on them. I mean, for them, it's subconscious. They don't even know what they're doing. Right. And, and the, what I'm, what I mean by they don't know what they're doing. They are, everybody wake up with this idea that I have my own mind. It's far from the truth. It's far from the truth. And when you're born, you have no ideas, beliefs, thoughts, or anything. You're just born. You just look and say, hey, who are these other people, these other figures out there, you know? So everything from zero to, you know, 20, let's just go with that. All of your beliefs are what people poured into you that was older than you. Your mom, your dad, your aunts, your uncles, your friends. That's where you're getting your beliefs from. And once you once you start once you start getting into understanding that and realizing that my ideas are not my own, my ideas are from somebody else. Because I mean, just let's look at politics. Usually, if your parents are Republicans or Democrats, you're Republican or Democrat. If look at religion, if you're if your parents and your grandparents was Baptist or Protestant or Catholic, then you're Baptist, Protestant or Catholic. It's not it's not your own ideas. You have a consortium of ideas of people that was older than you or people you looked up to. That's where your ideas come from. So the thing is, is question where their beliefs come from. Usually it's from a generation before them, a generation before them. But at some point you got to sit there and look at, OK, why are y'all thinking this way? And I and I do that with my family all the time. They uh get on I get on their nerves. I was about to say they get on my nerves, but but I, you know, I get on their nerves and you know, I always question information. You know, that's my favorite line. Question information. And those are the different things. It's like when I went to the stock market, it's and and I and I'll be honest and transparent, it was, oh, you trying to do that white people crap. And then when they when they said it. I mean, that's what all all the uh, people in my community were saying. Because I was trying, when I literally say I was trying to call everybody to get them on the same train, I was literally calling everybody trying to get them on the same train. I mean, people I ain't talked to since I was, you know, 19 years old and I was 27 at the time. I'm calling everybody, just trying to get somebody on the train with me. And, oh, man, you trying to do that white people stuff. You trying to do it. And then, and then now you fast forward, the same people that said that I was out here trying to, I was going against my race because I wanted to invest money. Um, I wish I would have did it with you. It's because they're saying that the things that they're saying is based off of information that they got before. Just because your mom and your grandma and your great-grandma didn't invest. But your mom, your grandma, your great-grandma, grandpa, it don't matter, female or male. Um, the reason why they didn't invest because they was broke. But you took that mentality because you just heard it from somebody else. You thinking you're not thinking for yourself. You're thinking based off of other people's beliefs, and then they want to be upset. But I mean, like I said, it, for for them, it's it's more more of. And wait, I'll take it one step further. I was about to end it right there, but I'm gonna take it one step further. I'm gonna take it one step further. So, like in a video when he said they didn't want them to leave him, it's that aspect of it. But they also want that aspect of. Okay, I'm gonna tell him it's not, it don't work. So when he fails subconsciously, when he fails, because we ain't seen nobody like you come from the penitentiary and go to Harvard. Nobody has seen that done. So when you fail, I can sit there and have the I told you so moment. Instead of saying, 
instead of going with them and supporting them and trying to get them to drive for their dream because they're mentally blocked from all the other information that was poured into their head, they want to have that I told you so moment. And I still got people sitting there waiting for me to have that I told you so moment. But then after that, I told you so moment, and then they realize it didn't happen, especially after, you know, I went overseas contracting, and then I'm telling people, invest, invest, invest. And then I'm the youngest guy there. And then, you know, the older guy saying, I'm too young. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And I said, stop spending your money on wild vacations and stuff like that. Save it and invest. After I came back home and then they came back home, they called me every week on nauseam, waiting to see, oh, when is he going to run out of money? When is he going to run out of money? And then now he's back on the grind struggling with us and got to go to work to do this and that. I mean, I had this for... At least nine months straight, every week, somebody from the team was calling me. Hey, hey man, how's it going? They really weren't wondering how I was doing. They was wondering, uh, when are you going to be like us? And then after, you know, about eight, nine months, it just stopped calling. And then, you know, we reconnected years later. And then all of them said the same thing. Man, my damn, oh, we should just listen to you, man. But at the time, they didn't want to listen to me because they said, this guy is so young. You know, we already live life. He don't know what the, he don't know what life is really like. And the only thing I was telling him was stop spending your money. You're making a lot. Stop spending it. You know, use it for other avenues instead of just going to see who could take the best vacation. And that's that's literally what I told him. And and they just, you know, debunked it. I mean, well, they were trying to debunk it, but they were debunking it based off of information they said before. But I'm a, you know, pause back, you know, because I can go into this topic forever and then you know, we only got so many hours in a day. But but yeah, I mean, I 100% agree with this video. What he's saying is absolutely true. But I don't believe that they're consciously trying to hold them back. They are just subconsciously doing everything based off the generations before that, you know, and put it into their system. Yeah, starting out, I was the same way. You know, wanted to share everything with everybody that I knew and come to find out. And you had warned me. I ain't going to lie. You had warned me. It, don't waste your time. But I tried and wasted my time. Honestly, I can now understand, you know, when people say, oh, the rich just keep all their secrets. They don't want to tell anybody. No, they want to tell people. It's just nobody wants to listen. And that's really mm -hmm. all. It is. But with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below um share this video subscribe we'll see you guys in the next one